And now I'm in my mix. What's going on guys? I'm Gregory West. I'm a vocal coach and these are my top exercises for developing mixed voice. You can find me on the social medias at Gregarious West and check out my website voicelessonswithgreg.com. So in this video, I don't want to talk about, you know, what mixed voice is, how it's different from other things. I just want to jump right into the juicy stuff. <laughs> what are the exercises that you should be doing to develop mixed voice? What are those exercises supposed to feel like, sound like? What are they supposed to do for you? How do you go from point A to, you know, point G? G for Greg. So number one is the creek. Creek is the word that CVT or complete vocal technique has created for this type of sound. But a lot of people just call this vocal fry. So let's start off by finding a nice relaxed vocal fry. Uh... It should be nice and rhythmic. We don't want it to be breathy. We want it to be nice and clear. So it shouldn't sound like we don't want this kind of pushed creak where it's, you know, uh, almost breathy or husky sounding. You can also try getting to it from an mmm, mmm, like mmm, so tasty. Mmm. Now, one of the things you should notice when doing the creek is that there's, there's sort of this tightness to the creek, but at the same time, this relaxation. There's something almost relaxing about, ah, that requires very little effort. But yet there's something almost more engaged and tensed about that coordination compared to, let's say, something with a little bit of airflow. Ah, ah, ah. Something is squeezing together to make the creak. And what's squeezing together are the back part of the vocal folds. And this is sometimes called cartilaginous adduction, but there's definitely more squeezing going on at the back part. So when you go, uh, uh, if you feel something back there, you know, that's probably what you're feeling. So now let's take our creak and let's move up in pitch, sliding into chest voice. Uh, 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 uh. Now I want you to try to go up in pitch in the same way. Ah, ah, ah. But I want you to keep the creak the whole time. Ah, ah, ah. This exercise is gonna make sure that that tension at the back of the folds stays there. And why you might want this is because a lot of times people will do this exercise, they'll go up in pitch and they'll get it's like every video, every video, there's always an airplane, there's always a truck, something. <laughs> the reason why this weird sound is gonna lead to mixed voice is because a lot of times people can't get into their mixed voice because they let go of the closure of the vocal folds. They, they don't keep their vocal folds tensed enough and instead they end up going into falsetto. Uh, uh, using some of that creak is going to allow your vocal folds to have more tension in them as you ascend, preventing you from breaking into falsetto. Uh... So we don't want to be letting go of that tension when we ascend. Uh... No. You hear how it's not getting breathy or looser. I'm not letting go at all. So then the next step is coordinating out of that creek onto some sound. So we'll try it in the lower notes first. When I'm doing this, I'm not letting go of the tension, right? I'm not going, ah, ah, ah. That just feels like that tension of the, ah, just totally left, right? I'm trying to keep that engaged. Ah, 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 ah,
Now, most people aren't going to be able to just, you know, jump into doing that. You're probably going to get a bunch of problems along the way. That's to be expected. Don't worry about it. One of the biggest things that might happen is you might get a tone that's sort of layered with the creak. And this is actually not a bad place to be for a beginner. But if you've been doing this exercise for, I don't know, a month, two months, then you should be looking for a way to clear that creaking out of your voice. You don't want to just keep that in there. It's maybe like a temporary, you know, step, but you need to keep progressing and eventually learn how to remove the creak. Now, another way you can approach this is by starting on a clean sound and then adding the creak to the note, but it's important the way that you add the creak, all right? We can sort of find the creaking by relaxing our voice. We could go, ah, and this isn't the way, right? I, I'm thinking like you start in a light sound, ah, and then you squeeze that ah, 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 feeling as you sustain that same pitch. So that would sound like this. Ah, that's kind of what we're looking for. You can just start in falsetto on the higher notes. It's not a big deal. And that might result in something cool. So the last thing to play around with with the creek is to mess with the amount of breath pressure that you use when you're trying to coordinate out of the creek right so if we're you know doing uh, our creek slide playing with how much do you try to push your voice against that creek the more pressure you build the chestier the sound is so if we keep a little bit of creaking tension in that but we don't really push too hard we're gonna get a very light sound uh, If I push harder against the creek, it's going to be a louder, fuller, chestier sound. All right, the next exercise are glottals. Now, you may hear people refer to these as a glottal attack or a glottal stop. And some people will say, oh, those are unhealthy. Don't do glottal attacks. Don't do glottal stops. But that's a bunch of nonsense. As usual, the world of singing is filled with bullshit. So in English, glottal stops are really common in the language, right? We might say, uh-oh, uh, 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 that's a glottal stop. You can really hear this at the beginning of, you know, the word, uh, 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 uh-oh, 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 uh, 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 uh
No, you're not supposed to do that. But it's a good idea to practice this at many different volumes. The volume you should start at is something you need to play around with. I mean, if you can't get a glottal in really, really low volumes, then don't start the exercise there. Make that like a goal that you're gonna work towards over time. A lot of times people have difficulty with the lower volumes executing glottal attacks. Typically with a bit more volume, people are able to get a nice clean glottal attack. Ah, 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 ah. And then they might lower the volume. Ah, 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 ah. And instead of that nice little sound at the beginning of the notes, ah, 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 they get something like so that's a problem and you really need to think about holding the breath and then breaking that apart with a glottal and in fact a key to doing this right is to not think about only the glottal being at the beginning but also at the end of the sound right so i open it for the initial glottal uh, but then i close it right back uh, so I, I don't go uh, and then i didn't close afterwards you gotta close All right, so start low and work your way up. As we begin entering the passaggio for men around, you know, like C4. Ah, 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 ah. Right around here, you might start to notice some problems, right? So just maybe you need to get a little bit louder right here, generate a little bit more push from down below. Ah, 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 ah. And that's okay. You're gonna get better and better and more skilled at it with time. going a little fast let me slow this down because the faster you go the more likely it is that you're gonna mess it up and so ladies you might start to run into trouble around this part of your voice and it'll be the same problem as the men you'll start to get a little airier a little looser you'll find that you can't really hold the breath back properly and that your glottal isn't isn't very crispy it's not very clean you know we're losing this sound at the beginning of the notes ah So that's just going from the bottom, working your way up, right? And obviously this works well for me because, you know, I already can sing in mixed voice. I already have developed this part of my voice, but what about for you? What if this is just totally failing and you can't get higher? Well, we can start by developing it from falsetto. Uh, 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 uh. So some people will, will say things like, oh, falsetto is disconnected and mixed voice or uh, or head voice is connected. And um, that's the difference. And this is really is just nonsense, right? So falsetto is always a disconnected mechanism. Our head voice is a connected mechanism. Head voice is actually a model voice registration. You will always have that register break uh, when you go out of your falsetto. You can totally start from a falsetto and learn to coordinate that with better and better closure. What we're looking to do is as we do the glottal from falsetto, we're, we're using a bit more air, right? Ah, ah, it's looser, it's breathy. And then we start to use that glottal to add tension into the vocal folds. And as we do this, we simultaneously raise the breath pressure. And if you're wondering about breath pressure and how breath pressure works, I recommend that you check out my video here. But basically you're, you're increasing that force, that push, that attempt to exhale your air. You're, you're trying to push more. What you don't want to do is do the glottal and then totally let go of it. Ah, ah, ah. You need to hold on to that tension. Ha. Ah, ha. Ah. For ladies, this will be a more challenging note for you. Ha. Ah, ah, ha. Ah. 
The last thing with the glottals is to pay attention to what is the vowel or vocal tract shaping that you're using. And those aren't exactly the same thing, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. So if y'all have been here, you always hear me say vocal tract, and then I say everything from here on up, right? So if we smile, that's moving the vocal tract. If we open the mouth more, that's moving the vocal tract. If we adjust the tongue position, that's moving the vocal tract. Raising the larynx, moving the vocal tract. Moving the pharyngeal walls in, moving the vocal tract. Soft palate, you get the point. So there's gonna be shapes that are more efficient and shapes that are less efficient. And what does that mean for you in developing your mixed voice? It means that you might really struggle to find the vocal fold tension to keep the vocal fold closure without breaking into falsetto. That might be what happens as a result of using a shape that really sucks. All right, and I shouldn't say sucks. It's just that some things are more efficient and some things are less efficient. So like an OO vowel and an E vowel are gonna be harder typically to find the closure on. So that's why it's probably better if you start with an open vowel. And then after you find the glottal on the open vowel, then you can narrow and close the vowel down. So for example, Let's say you're trying it on an E and you notice that as you get higher and higher, it gets more and more difficult and you're going breathy. I'm still good there. Man, it's kind of blowing apart and breathy, right? Now. And now I'm like really teetering. And now you start to feel, you know, tension, bad tension in your throat. It feels, you know, strainy and you have to get louder and push more and more and more. Well, instead of doing that, try to open the vowel. So we're not going to go with an E. We're going to go with an A, like you're calling out, hey, It's important that as you go up, you don't allow the vowel to close, right? So if you don't move the vocal tract and you have this A, that is not an A in the high part of the voice, okay? That turns into A, A. Does that sound like A? No, it sounds more like E. So we need to continually open the mouth, right? Go to a smile and make sure the tongue is low enough. We don't want this. And remember, the support is staying engaged the whole time. So you're breaking apart your glottal stop with voice, not the other way around. You're not going, eh, eh, eh. That's that's wrong. You're gonna really struggle if you do it that way. You need to hold your breath. So the tension in your core down below is there the whole time. All right, and last but not least, we have the falsetto mix approach to developing your mixed voice. So I have a video out about this already, which you can check up here. I forget which side it's on. To use the falsetto mix requires this prerequisite that your falsetto can be loud, clear, and strong. So if you suck at that, <laughs> then you're kind of going to have to put in the work to develop that first before this will even be a useful technique or strategy for your mixed voice. But I highly recommend that you do it. So we first want to start out by finding a nice whoopy falsetto, right? Like you're, you're at a sporting game, right? Here in America, you know, it's some American football. Woo! It's really, really loud. Woo! Woo! This is the same technique that classical sopranos use in a large part of their vocal range because it's very powerful and it's very loud. So mimicking like a soprano. Is probably a good idea. We want it to be deep. Woo! 
Woo, right? The larynx is down, the space of the mouth, the soft palate is lifted. Woo, woo. This is going to let the voice be loud and powerful. It's important that we're not breathy, right? We don't want to, whoo, whoo. And the larynx shouldn't be up. No, it's woo, woo, woo. When you get really loud with it, it should start to ring and buzz a little bit, right? There should be this, this, this buzzy, ringy quality to the sound. You can use oo and e, and that's about it. Both of those vowels need to resemble each other. They need to kind of feel and sound the same. Both of those are whooped, right? So for men, you should be aiming to get this loud, powerful falsetto sound um, around uh, an A4, a B4, C5, right? Anywhere around these notes is, is probably pretty good. And for ladies, let's just say around a C, a D, right? An E. Wherever you feel that you could make your falsetto powerful, it's not a bad idea to start there and then drag it lower, right? So for my ladies, I'd like you to be trying to do this at like a, at like a C5. That would probably be a good place for you. And for men, I'd like you to be trying this around an A4. And you know what? Actually, ladies, you're going to be at the D5 not the C5, so I want you to try it there. So if you need to start higher, that's fine. And for men, what we don't want is you to get weak when you go lower. That's wrong. Another way you can practice this is crescendo the falsetto, right? So start with it weak and soft and then get louder. ladies you probably hear that ringy quality start to come into the sound the louder i get and that's what we're looking for another way to approach it is use some glottal attacks and remember when you're going louder we want that larynx to go down ooh ooh like an owl ooh 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 and open your mouth Ladies, ooh, 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 ooh. probably clipping the mic because my voice is just so resonant and powerful. All right. So once you've got this loud, clear falsetto, what we're going to do is we're going to establish what the level of support is, right? What's the level of breath pressure? How much tension do you feel in the core, right? And all of these muscles have been working out, guys. Uh, not really. Not really. Still got that. So got that uh, quarantine bod. But you know what? I went to the gym today. First time at the gym in a long time. All right, so we want to figure out when we make that loud, clear falsetto sound, how much effort is that taking? And for ladies, you're up here, but y'all don't need me to demonstrate. So what you want to do is once you have an understanding of, yeah, I feel how much I'm pushing. It's not, it's not an intense amount of pushing. It's not like, huh? It's not like you're taking a crap, right? And it's also not super light. Like if you go, uh, uh, it's significantly more than that. Now what we want to do is we want to keep that 100% steady, 100% constant. You don't want to increase or decrease that pressure or, or force or breath support as we change the sound. All right, this is really important. And I always say this in my voice lessons, but people mess it up. So if this next part doesn't work, you got to go back and make sure that you're keeping the support constant. Now we're going to sustain our ooh, and then we're going to open the vowel up. Cool, right? I mean, you're already familiar with that if you saw my falsetto mix video, but maybe that's the first time you've heard something like that. In which case, you're welcome. I just blessed your ears. <laughs> No, but seriously, it sounds like I got chestier, right? Sounds like I went into a mix or something like that. But all I did, all I did, I swear to God, all I did was change the vocal tract shape. I went from an ooh to an ow, oh, ow, oh, a very like, you know, flamboyant ow. Oh, you're so right, girl, ow. Oh. It's very bright, so it's not oh, oh, it's not that. If you do that at that high range, you're not gonna go into the falsetto mix. It's just gonna stay falsetto. That's wrong. You need to make sure you smile. Big smile, big mouth opening. Like you're taking a bite out of something humongous. 
The tongue needs to be low enough. If you keep the tongue up, you're not gonna do it right. The tongue needs to be down more. Here's what it sounds like if you keep the tongue up. And again, the support is constant, right? I'm not messing down below. I'm not pushing. Ah! That's not what I'm doing to get the sound. Don't do that. All right, so we've done ooh, oh, right? And ladies, by the way, sorry, y'all are up here. And that's a bit high for me to want to do this. But it's the exact same thing for the men. So just press pause and give that a shot. So we've done ooh, oh, right? But we can also do e, a, e, a. The a is like you're calling out. It has to be an open a. Hey, hey, somebody come help, right? It's not hey. That's a closed a. That's wrong. We don't want an e. We want an a. Happy, open, uh, bright. E and remember your checklist, right? You got to keep the mouth open and a smile and drop the jaw. Lower the tongue. You should see the back of your throat. Look at that dangly thing. That's the uvula. And ladies, y'all are up here. Now play around with these notes, right? A4 for men, D5 for lady. That's sort of maybe like the central position to pivot around. You might have success a little lower, more success a little higher. You don't have to rigidly stick to those notes. And if this exercise worked, definitely your next step is, you know, moving the pitch around. Also check out my falsetto mix video. But the really cool thing about this is that you can train your mixed voice from your falsetto, right? You can train your mixed voice to connect to your falsetto very, very smoothly. So we can do And then I'm back in the mix. This can be finicky and tricky at first. And for many people, it just feels like falsetto, right? It just feels like falsetto to me. I swear to God, it feels like falsetto. Hey, feels like that. Woo, hey. It just feels like a louder, clearer version. And that's okay, right? It's okay for it to feel like falsetto. Don't go off of your feelings. Go based off the sound, record yourself. If you listen to the sound and you go, Oh yeah, that kind of sounds like a yell or that kind of sounds like chest voice. Then your feelings don't matter. I'm sorry, right? They don't matter and they shouldn't matter that much, right? What matters is your audience. What are, what are they hearing? Do you want the sound or not? Okay. <laughs> so then we can start to like layer up and double the approaches, right? So maybe we'll start in the falsetto mix and we'll do some glottal attacks, right? That could be an interesting way to combine exercises to get even more development and growth. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys found those tips helpful. Check out my website, voicelessonswithgreg.com. Again, the socials, subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in the future. Let me know if you have a question or something was confusing or you don't get it. All right, bye.